Hey folks and welcome back to another Division 2 video. In this one I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I actually started this channel to help out new players trying to get into the Division 2 and it's been awesome to see how many people have watched and used my Beginner's Guide series. Something I'd love to continue to work on but at the moment I'm not too sure what the next part could be. I feel like I've covered most of the fundamentals as well as a range of other areas in the game. So in the spirit of trying to help out new players, in this video I thought it could be fun to go through some of the questions asked by new and veteran agents on the Division 2 subreddit looking for any that I could hopefully shed some light on. And if this is something you enjoy, let me know because I'm happy to do more videos like this in the future. This is actually something I'd really love to do for all of you folks watching. If you have any Division 2 questions, please ask in the comments below and I'll look at putting together a video just like this one, but for this community. Remember, there is no such thing as a stupid question, well, not all the time, and I'm sure you're not the only person searching for the answer, so ask away. Or if you have any questions for me in general, I'd be happy to answer a few of those at the end of a video too. With that, let's jump into it. So on the Division 2 subreddit, Postaratum asked, the TDI card custom, how do I get it? The TDI card custom, the named version of the card 45 pistol, is a dark zone exclusive, which means only enemies and activities in one of the three dark zones will drop it. But there are a few other ways you can pick one up. With it being a dark zone exclusive, you can get it if it's for sale at one of the three dark zone vendors. This will cost you DZ resources, but these are much easier to farm and extract than looking for a specific item. Or if you don't want to go near a dark zone at all, you can get the TDI card custom from a named item cache, which you can get as a reward from the seasons or the summit challenges. The user Black Tusk Sniper 86 asked if damage to targets out of cover is really that important. If you want to put together a weapon damage build, it's simply one of the best attributes you can add when it comes to raw damage per shot. This is because just like damage to armor and damage to health, damage to targets out of cover is a multiplicative damage type, giving an overall larger damage increase than additive damage attributes. But unlike damage to armor and damage to health, damage to targets out of cover applies to both armor and health with the only downside being it doesn't apply to enemies that are in cover, which is actually quite rare, and it's also quite easy to force them out of cover if they refuse to move. Fallout 457 asked if the Nemesis Mask is still obtainable. If you're referring to the Nemesis Mask which was the reward for collecting all of the Resident Evil apparel during the Project Nightmare apparel event, Currently, no, and unfortunately I can't see it coming back. Possibly the actual apparel from the Resident Evil event, but the apparel event masks are supposed to be a rare reward for finishing the event within a time limit. We've seen other apparel from apparel events appear in the premium store, but sadly never the event masks. So fingers crossed, but sorry, I can't see it happening. The user Supersonic X 2003X asked any XP farming tips, new player looking to hit max level. One of the fastest ways to farm experience currently in game is to head out into the open world of the light zone and chase down the roaming resource convoys, ideally on challenging or heroic with a few directives active. If you'd like a few more ways to farm XP, check out my quick video going over a few of the fastest ways to farm experience in Tom Clancy's A Division 2. I'll link that in the description and in the top right here. E4Blue01 asks if the classified assignments in The Division 2 are free to play. So in The Division 2, the extra content for the first year of Tom Clancy's The Division 2 was free, but that only included the three episodes released throughout the year, adding extra story missions and Kenley College. But for the classified assignments, you do actually need the year one bundle. This will give you a few extras like an outfit, emote, but more importantly, it is needed to unlock the eight classified assignments. The user, a former pessimist, which I love that name, asked what is, by far, the hardest heroic solo mission. 
This question is more opinion than fact, but personally I'd have to say the DARPA research labs. Not because the mission itself is particularly hard, but the first time you take on the end of DARPA solo on Heroic just sucks so much especially when you're trying to beat a time. Anyone who remembers when season leagues still had heroic difficulty knows exactly what I'm talking about. It was bad. Edom Plateau asked, why is SHD calibration so hard to obtain? I think this is pretty much to slow progression. The optimization station in the division one was so easy to use that within a few weeks of its release, end game players already had all of their builds maxed out leaving nothing really to do. This is my opinion, but I think the SHD calibration has been made so rare purely to stop players rushing the optimization process. If you'd like a few tips or to find all the different ways to farm SHD calibration, check out this video here, also linked in the description. The user Journalista asked, are we going to get more weapons anytime soon? Sadly, I doubt until the end of the year or even early next year. As far as we know, we will not be getting any new content drops until around that time, and we usually only get new gear and weapons with bigger content releases. So I imagine we will with the new content coming to the Division 2, but that won't be till after the release of the Division Heartland, and possibly into next year. Oscar of Ostra asked, is crossplay available in the Division 2? The Division 2 does have crossplay between PC and Stadia, but sadly not crossplay as you would like to imagine it. So not between PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, just PC and Stadia. Olama1 asked co-op in the Division 2. As the title says, does the game have a co-op mode? An easy answer, yes. If anything, the game is designed more towards co-op play than solo play. Not to say you can't play it solo, but with the ability to put together a dedicated healer, tank, and damage builds, you can get some creative and strong group compositions, which makes it very fun to play co-op. There's also harder content, which works a lot better with a group than solo. The user Link Not Zelda asked, can someone explain what happens when you create a hardcore agent? In Tom Clancy's The Division 2, creating a hardcore agent is exactly like creating a normal Division agent with one game-changing difference. The moment that character dies in-game, you lose that character completely and have to restart from the beginning of the game. There are a few smaller differences, like you don't get to access the stash across your characters, but the big one is that when you die, you die. The story and progression of the game are exactly the same as a normal character. I promise I won't keep doing this, but if you want more information about Hardcore Agents, check out this video here, also linked in the description. Mr. Siege asked, what's your favorite exotic? For me, it easily has to be the Regulus pistol. It looks awesome and it literally pops heads. Whoever came up with it needs a serious pat on the back. The user Project Gameverse 2000 said, I believe the Dodge City Gunslinger holster should allow you to have two pistols, Am I wrong? You are not wrong, Project Gamerverse 2000. You are not wrong at all. I'd love to run around DC or New York dual-wielding revolvers or dual-wielding reguluses. And finally, Orphan of Kos asked, is Claws Out DZ exclusive or not? It is, just like I mentioned earlier with the KDI card custom, the Claws Out is a Dark Zone exclusive holster, so you can only get it from the Dark Zone, the Dark Zone vendors, and also from named item caches. And that's all for this video. I actually really enjoyed doing this. If you have any questions you'd like me to answer in a YouTube comments version of this video, leave it in the comments below. If you spend much time on Twitch, I'm one half of a streaming duo playing The Division 2 every Monday and Wednesday, and other games on Saturday at 10 p.m. UK time. Pop in, drop a follow, and say hi. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for future Division 2, Division Universe, and gaming content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.